Well, I just pulled an all-nighter staying up to watch season 4 of the Netflix show Camp Cretaceous and to make this video, so, you know, hopefully you enjoy it. Before I go into this season, I'll just briefly give my thoughts on the first three seasons. The first season subverted my expectations by actually being good, which was a pleasant surprise, as I will definitely admit that I wasn't thrilled about the character designs just like everyone else when they were first re released online. However, the first season did a really good job of tying into the events of Jurassic World while at the same time giving us likeable characters for us to root for as they dodged many hungry dinosaurs. The season ended with all the visitors being evacuated from Isla Nublar, except for our cast leaving them stranded on Isla Nublar. The second season was definitely a downgrade from the first season, with the more serious tone of the prior season now being replaced with not necessarily a sillier tone, but more cartoony scenarios taking place such as a 13-year-old boy with a spear fighting a full-grown Carnotaurus. Combine this and some other elements, this season ranks among the worst for me, but it's still not terrible. More, it just doesn't really fit as well into the Jurassic franchise as the first season because of some of the over-the-top scenarios. Season 3 honestly had some of my favorite elements of the entire Jurassic franchise. In short, it did the horror aspect very well, as well as having the best hybrid of the franchise. Honestly, for a more in-depth analysis of Season 3 and my thoughts, you can check out my review on that I made on it a while back. Season 3 ends with the campers finally leaving the island and making their way back home on a boat. And finally, we are all caught up to Season 4 of the series, and I'm conflicted on it to be honest. On one hand, it does a great job with the characters and developing them further in ways that frankly the Jurassic World movies haven't done for any of the new characters, I guess the advantage of having a show over a movie. It also does a better job at developing their characters in a way that makes sense, unlike current Marvel movies and shows. But this season has some really, really, really stupid stuff. You'll see what I'm talking about in a minute as we dive into spoilers, so you have been warned. First off, the characters. Cash was a stupid villain. He's just your typical normal evil guy that is totally willing to kill people so casually with no signs of remorse. For a supposedly intelligent guy, he sure gets distracted by the lamest excuses. I guess you could argue it's because of his ego and the fact that he's clearly a narcissistic individual, but still the whole, what are you scared, taunts that Darius gives to him as literally all their interactions gets really repetitive, annoying, and boring real fast. Come to think of it, that's how it always goes down with these adult villains in these shows. Also, the fact that he just destroys his own robots but complains about how expensive they are is just another sign of being a generic bad villain that destroys everything. Kind of like another villain I know. A more technical thing that bothered me is how whenever he walks around in the jungle, he only has one Brad robot with him. When it's shown multiple times that these things are easily destroyed by pretty much anything. Whether it's dinosaurs or like two small teenagers. And don't worry, we'll talk about his plan in the Brad soon enough. My two favorite characters of the season were easily Yaz and Kenji. Kenji has grown in a believable way from his season 1 counterpart into a much more matured version of himself, while still remaining true to his character, with him jumping into some more dangerous situations to save his friends, even if sometimes they're a bit ridiculous. Although he probably has my favorite joke in this series. When talking about Kenji, I also have to talk about Brooklyn, because apparently they're a couple now, which is fine. I do wish they hinted at it a tiny bit more, but honestly it's fine, it's cute, it's whatever. Now I just get to watch all the Darius and Kenji shippers cry themselves to sleep. There's more I want to talk about, so you know, let's move on, because I could, I could frankly care less about romantic relationships of any kind. Yaz has PTSD, and I love it. I meant that to come out differently. Most of the time in movies or TV shows, PTSD is often depicted as something that can be turned over with a mediocre pep talk, which anyone who experiences it or knows someone that has experienced it knows this is far from the truth, and especially for a teenager who has gone through so much PTSD is very appropriate for a character like Yaz, and for all the campers as a matter of fact. She keeps having nightmares of all the dinosaurs she's encountered. All the theory YouTubers are probably very disappointed with the fact that Scorpius Rex and Indominus Rex was just a dream sequence and not actually in the show. But even when she talks with her friends about the nightmares, the PTSD doesn't just go away. She actually ends up having a severe panic attack during a crucial scene after she thinks she's all fine, which was terrifyingly realistic. 
When show or movie shows that events actually affect their characters in a way that is relatable, it makes the characters just that much more real. All the other characters have some minor moments throughout the show, but honestly for the most part they're just kind of the, the same as they are at the end of season 3, so not much to talk about. Alright, now let's move on to the thing everyone probably wants to hear about, the dinosaurs. The Mosasaurus was pretty cool. I'm glad they're keeping the continuity of Fallen Kingdom with the Mosasaurus being in the open ocean now. Also glad to see that the Mosasaur gets an action sequence that lasts more than 30 seconds. Is it me or, or do I feel like the Mosasaur just gets bigger and bigger every time it appears? No? Just me? Okay. The stowaway on the boat that was teased at the end of Season 3 was a compi, which disappointed all the people in their theories. Well, have no fear, because they kill that sucker off real quick. Smilodon was better than I thought it would be, but I still didn't love it. But I was satisfied with its conclusion, to say the least. <laughs> it was nice to see two T-Rexes together again, but them being transported from Isosorna, I'm pretty sure breaks some kind of continuity, but I could be wrong. I often am. The black coloration of one of them was nice to see, and finally getting some black representation from T-Rexes now, I'm just waiting to get our Tyrannosaurus Rex gay representation. I also like the dynamic between the mother and daughter Rex. The interactions with them felt like real animal behavior and really made them feel like actual animals and not monsters. It does a much better job of this than Fallen Kingdom. When the mother Rex was tending to her daughter after both being drugged and giving us the first Rex on Rex fight in this series, it tugged at this emotionless guy's heart and it tugged even more when the drones forced the mom away from the daughter so she could go fight the Kentrosaurus. One of the dinosaurs that came back that everyone was excited for was the Spinosaurus, which didn't have as much screen time as I was hoping, nor did it have its iconic roar, but it was still cool to see nonetheless. I do love how it broke through the canyon wall and cobbled up the Smilodon. Since the Spinosaurus being my favorite dino from the franchise and my favorite dinosaur in real life, it was so satisfying to see it eat that ugly looking Smilodon. The surprise dinosaur was definitely the return of another fan favorite, Dilophosaurus. Like the Spinosaurus, it didn't have a lot of screen time, but the fact that it was unexpected still made its debut all the more awesome. Well, now I get to talk about the stuff I didn't like, which sadly there's kind of a lot. Yeah, to say I didn't like the robots would kind of be an understatement. When I first saw the Robo Dogs in the trailer, I knew I wouldn't like them, but hey, in real life there are some real Robo Dogs already, so I kind of tolerated it. But then they just had to make this abomination. The Brad X looks like a cheap Mecha Godzilla clone had sex with a Terminator ripoff, and it's just so stupid. It's like a five-year-old came up with it. Oh, doy, I want a robot dinosaur that looks like a human, and he can shoot explosions out of its mouth. It sticks out like a sore thumb, and it's just... <sighs> so, so... Dumb. Also, Kenji perfectly landing on the Smilodon from a cliff and riding it like a bucking bronco to let Ben escape and then get off completely unscathed was the ridiculous thing I was talking about earlier with Kenji. It gave me way too similar vibes to when Ben fought Toro on the island, which that's not a good thing. The baby dinosaurs are cute, but they're just another cute mascot for the gang, like how Bumpy was now, with even their own little cute nicknames like Angel, Rebel, and Firecracker. They're just basically giant puppies, which I'm not a fan of because they're acting too mammal-like, which, yeah, I know it's fictional, but still, I don't think they should be running around like playing fetch or wagging their tails. I hope they don't come back, but they probably will because we gotta have that cute adorable pet sidekick. The plot of make the dinosaurs fight each other is fine enough on its own, but the whole mind control the dinosaurs thing is kinda pushing it, but at least they kinda explained it. And at least it... it somewhat makes sense. At least it makes more sense than pointing a gun at a person and then pull the trigger to send a dinosaur after it. I need to review that film and tear it a new one. I'm pretty torn on this season, as it has some really great character moments. I dare to say the best in the series, but it takes all the weaknesses of the previous seasons and amplifies it to an 11. So overall, I think I just would have to put it above season 2. If I were to rank them from worst to best, it would go as follows. 2, 4, 3, and 1. 
I hope that season 5 is better, especially with the twist revealing that Kenji's dad is the president of Manticorp, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see for ourselves. I do fear that they're gonna run this series into the ground, and I hope they end it at season 5, because I don't really see how many more seasons they could stretch out of it. Honestly, it should have just ended at season 3. But yeah, I'm curious to hear your thoughts on this season, so comment down below on whether you agree or disagree with me, and if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and spank that like button, and go ahead and spank that subscribe button. And I hope you all have a great day, and stay safe out there.